All right, this is a crash course, so let's jump right into it because we're going to co cover a lot of ground and uh, there's not so much time. So quick, quick introduction about me. Uh, yeah, I'm a game designer at InnoGames um, and where I did for the last three years Forge of Empires and now we're preparing more, st more cool games to present to you soon. All right, let's start with game diagrams. First, let's ask a question, what is a game? Because we're talking about game diagrams, it's probably important to know what a game is. So, who here thinks this is a game? One, two, three, all right. I'd say this is a toy, it's not a game. Who here thinks he can turn it into a game? One, two, yeah, a couple more guys, yeah, that's cool. Someone already has turned it into a game. Uh, that's Simon. Most of you probably know it. So uh, what's the difference? Let's look at a diagram of uh, first of the toy. So you can see here, uh, what you can see here is you have, you have some stuff to do, but there is not much interaction and there is no interconnection or anything within the, within the diagram. And here's the other diagram. You can see uh, there, is now, there is now more connection points and more interaction in it. Um, and what happened is uh, the makers of Simon, Milton Bradley, actually introduced the sequence and introduced points counting. So if you uh, correctly followed the sequence. But let's look at that in detail. What turned this from a toy into a game? Well, as I said, the first the rules were added and uh, by giving out a sequence to follow and the game tells you you have to follow that sequence. Yes, you can push the funny buttons and just make sounds, that's also cool, but then you won't get any, get any points. And then the points are added, that's quantification, right? We count something, we count, you, we count your progress or how good you were. You were. And uh, also this can add competition where a couple of us can play the game and we count our points and then we can compare uh, who's the best of us. This is not my definition. I took this definition from uh, Kate Sen and Eric Zimmerman in Rules of Play. So what I want to say here is that the diagram can help you to identify what are all the items in your game and how do they interact and do they interact in a, in a way that makes sense. Talking about diagrams there is a lot of work about diagrams uh, floating around and most of it is a bit too sophisticated for my taste because I'm a simple guy. And that's why I use this very simple system here. Just these four uh, operators if you want. A game object is anything in the game that you have some interaction on. Yeah? So it could be a character that you can hit or it could be a house that you can build or whatever. And building or hitting a guy would be an action. Or an action could also be a sequence of actions, like a complete fight. How you want to model this in a diagram depends a lot on how, how um, deep you want to go. If you just want to analyze your uh, 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 game, um, just a second. Uh, if you just want to analyze your game economy, then it's fine uh, to just say a fight is a fight. If you want to analyze a fight, then you pr should probably split out the fight into attacks, defenses, and other stuff. Resources are kind of like objects, but they are lump objects. We don't care about them. So, for example, in many games you have gold or money or whatever. You don't care about the individual gold coin. Most of the time it's not even shown as an individual gold coin. It's just displayed as a lump of gold coins and then when you pick it up it says plus 500 gold coins or whatever even though the actual display is not 500 coins and th these things are connected through relationships and it's re really nice to just uh, write a one or two word explanation of how this connects and because this was all very theoretical I'm just going to show you now how to build a very very simple RPG from this very quickly. So what do you have in an RPG? You usually have a character and that character has a level. 
And the level usually determines in some way the attack and defense. Yeah, could be through spells or abilities or whatever, and we're not going to go into that much detail. We're just going to say, as the character levels up, he gets better at these things. And he uses these things in a fight, obviously. And why would he fight? He fights to gain some equipment, and that equipment, again, feeds back into his attack and defense, like you find the mighty battle axe, you find the cool armor and stuff. And also, of course, you gain XP and money, usually. The XP sets your maximum level in this di game diagram. Often, the XP just levels you up directly, but I want to go a different route and say, like, the money um, can be used to level you up. So once you've reached uh, the full experience uh, for your level, you can use the money to level yourself up. So this increases your level. And bam, that's your whole game charted out on a very small piece of paper right there. Let's talk about game balancing. There is one thing that's very different from what you've probably learned in university about m mathematical modeling. Because what you usually learn in mathematical modeling, uh, in, uh, in university about mathematical modeling, is descriptive modeling, which comes from science, right? So in science, you don't have many choices. You, you throw a stone, you observe how far the stone has traveled, then you build a model from that, and then you say, like, okay, if I double my power, the stone th should fly 1.5 times as far. And then you do some calculations, and then you set up um, an experiment and try out and observe whether this holds true or not. In games, you don't have this restriction. In games, you have constitutive modeling, which means that you put up a diagram. I just made that diagram up out of nothing, really, right? No one told me I have to do it in a specific way. And a couple of you probably disagreed about the way I set up the diagram right now. Um, and, then you have, and then you develop the math mathematical model from it, which is by saying, OK, this interacts in that way, this interacts in that way. And then you have a game test. It's not the same as a verification, because, well, first of all, here you have no choice. Here you have free choice how to set it up. Here you have the verification, and that is proof. Um, if, you tr if you set up a mathematical model and you try it out over, over many, many uh, test rows, uh, you will have a certain um, safety that this is actually the truth. And here, well, you can hope it works. Right? Because, uh, well, also, again, you can make it a bit uh, safer for yourself by saying, OK, we're just going to test it out on many, many different players before, before we release the game, actually. So how to approach the balancing? The balance, I approach the balancing by identifying what I call the pacemakers. The pacemakers are the uh, starting point for your balancing, and they, they are the things that drive your economy. Right? So, um, so for example, if you, build, if you build houses and workshops and so on, like we do in Forge of Empires, um, those give you resources to work with to build even more houses. So that's the core game loop. And the uh, rate at which you gain resources is the pacemaker. <laughs> controlling the pacemaker is critical for controlling the flow of your game. Um, many of you have probably played games where resources didn't really matter in the end. At first, they were a challenge. And then as you progressed, uh, you are just swimming in resources, and you just want to finish the game. That's probably a case of balancing not gone 100% right. I don't want to blame any colleagues here, but we've all played those games. Simple games should have a single pacemaker. That's for two reasons. Uh, first of all, it's easier for you to control the, the single pacemaker. And also, it's easier for the player to understand what he has to do. And if you have a simple game, it's likely that you have a player who is not simple. I'm not going to say that. but who wants some simple diversion, let's say, and he wants to be able to tell, he wants to be able to tell uh, exactly what he what he should do to progress. If you have complex games, of course, you can have different pacemakers. But then, in order to not ha create an imbalance, especially late in the game, uh, you need some way to transform one of the resource pacemakers into a, the other resource. Again, going back to our example. Where are the pacemakers here? Pacemakers here. It's obviously that, that, that the fight gives you XP and money, right? Because you use the XP to set your level, and you use the money to level up. And that's what you want to do. That's essentially the, what the game is about. 
uh, on an economic level. Of course, the game an RPG is about story or fighting or whatever you want, but on an economic level, this is about uh, leveling up. So the fights drive the game forward. And we also see um, a problem here. We see that XP and money are, have the same source and they feed into the same system. And there is no vari variance between those. So the, you can't use your money to do anything else right now. And that's a flaw and we're going to address it soon. I called this interesting graphs and their uses, but then I had to kick out most of the graphs. But first a warning. Why a warning? Mathematics said. So polynomial functions is what I like to use most in my games, and there are a couple of reasons for this. This is a polynomial function. This is how they can look. First thing you notice is, hey, that's pretty cool. It's one type of function, and it can look a lot of different ways. I didn't even show all the ways this can look. <clears throat> Some properties that would be um, important for you. Uh, we call the degree of a polynomial function um, the highest exponent in that function. And the interesting thing here is the uh, sum of uh, two polynomials or more polynomials, the degree doesn't change. It's the highest uh, degree in all the constituent pro uh, polynomials. And when you uh, multiply poly polynomial functions with each other, uh, the degree is the sum of the uh, highest constituent degrees. This is quite interesting. Why is this interesting? Because the degree of polynomials determines the uh, shape of the curve. And often, we know how a curve should look like in a game. Right? We know um, levels should probably, uh, you, start to, you should start out leveling quickly, and then you should not, qu not level as quickly anymore, and then it becomes a grind, probably. So, like this. And the game mechanics involved do often interact as a sum or product or division of each other. And as I said, uh, the shape of the function is often intuitive in the game design. Let's look at the simple RPG again. Um, so you have these fights that give XP and money. And from this, you have a level progression, right? And usually, or one thing, you, one thing you could posit is that you want to have your level progress. Uh, the fights required per level to level up should advance linearly so that you have a slower level progression as you go on. And how is this going to work? Uh, so this is what we want. And we have two curves that go feed into this, which is um, the XP you gain per fight, and the XP you gain per uh, the XP you require per level. And I don't know. Yeah, you can see. You, can you all see that? Can you all see the curves? Okay, that's great because I can't see the one curve here. <laughs> um, so you see here the XP required. If the XP required per level are uh, have a degree of three, and the XP you uh, given out for a fight have a degree of two, then the uh, fights we require per level will be linear. This is, these are not just made up curves. You can actually uh, go home, power up your Excel, and see if those curves work for you as well. They should. And we also have another uh, related system in here, which is in the fight itself, which is attack and defense. Um, usually, I want in, my, in an RPG, to say, uh, as you level up, the fights against equally powered enemies should get a little bit short, uh, a little bit longer. Uh, other people I've, I've heard say, no, they should always remain the same uh, number of rounds or whatever. I don't like that. I think uh, this doesn't feel like a progression, really. So this is, this is the curve I want to have, right? It should start out somewhere, and then it should increase a little bit but not increase too much. So this is a sublinear curve we are looking at here, and that's what we want to achieve. And if that's what we want to achieve, we have the defense curve, yeah, and we have the attack curve. And if the attack curve is how much damage you deal in a round, and if the defense curve is how much uh, damage you can absorb, then these systems interact again. 
and uh, the fight length will be determined by how uh, tech and defense uh, are scaled. So here, uh, if the defense grows, um, wait, is that actually true? Yeah, yeah, it is. So if the defense grows, um, the curve must be a fraction of a degree higher than the attack curve. So I think this is not true, um, because this is a cubic uh, uh, cubic function for attack and a squared function for defense. This, the, this is probably a wrong uh, number here. But the thing still holds true, uh, what I say underneath here. So the degree of the, uh, the defense must be um, a bit higher. So I told you we will fix the XP and money dependency. Um, and this is our game diagram. And how can we fix it? We can fix it by adding this. We add an in. And in the in, you go and actually, uh, you can't just fight monsters. You have to go into the in and ask people, uh, do you know where I can fight a minotaur? Do you know where I can fight a dragon? And then the fights become available. And to uh, get two more powerful monsters, you can use your uh, money to expand the inn and uh, have more customers in it, and then you can ask for more powerful monsters to fight. And uh, because this would still, would still not fix it, you can also go into the inn and buy consumables to power you up for a fight. So if you've expanded the inn too much, and you're suddenly running into fights that are way too hard for you, you can buy, go into the inn, buy some uh, consumables to power you up for the fight, and uh, then still carry on playing. And this adds a, lot, a little bit of interaction, so it makes it a bit more complicated for the player instead of leveling up directly. But um, it also adds choices, and choices are mostly what, games are, what makes games cool. Yeah. And this solves the uh, equality of money and XP, because XP are just accumulated, whereas you have the choice now as the player where to spend your money. So that's all. Thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, you can mail me or have them right now, because I rushed a little bit through this. And there's more stuff in the appendix of this presentation, which you can download. OK, so I guess what you're asking is, uh, do I need to actually apply these mathematics? Can I just, can, can't I just say, like, OK, for level 2, you need 10 XP. For level 20, you need 35 XP. For level 3, you need 100 XP or something like this, right? Um, you can do this, probably, if you don't want to take care of the game afterwards, I think. Or that would be my recommendation. Because if you just make up numbers, these will be very hard to maintain. Just think about, maybe you even have a logic internally of how you make up those numbers, and then you uh, give it to another uh, game designer and say, OK, I have to leave this project now, go on to the next project. And then you have to somehow explain your internal logic. Whereas if you set down the number of XP required per level in a, in a formula, you will just hand it over to the game designer, to the other game designer, and say, here, have a look. This is, these are the formulas involved, and you will have a uh, much easier time to take care of your game, to expand it, to let it continue to grow. Any other questions? No? All right. Well, then, thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>